How to get paid the royalties owed to you in South Africa? You may have heard that SABC is finally starting to pay back the R250 million in royalties owed to musicians, so I thought now is a good time to shed some light on how to actually get your royalties. If you're a musician, I'm confident that by the end of this article you will know a lot more about the different royalty collection agencies. You will learn what they do and what you need to do to get what's owed to you. First off, you need to be an active musician. You qualify for royalty payments if You have music playing on radio or TV. You have music playing in any other commercial space i.e. restaurants and shops. Your music is on jukeboxes. You are performing your own music at events slash concerts. Other people have recorded or performed songs that you've written. You have helped write someone else's song, or you performed on their song. You have CDs that are selling in music stores, or getting streamed on Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube. If you tick one or more of the above boxes, then you need to be a member of 1. Risa Recording Industry of South Africa 2. Samro South African Music Rights Organization 3. Sampra South African Music Performance Rights Association 4. Capasso Composers Authors and Publishers Association In this article I will unpack what each of these agencies does and what you need to do with each one to get what's owed to you. 1. Risa what they do. Give you your own ISRC code, the code radio stations and streaming platforms use to track the amount of times they play your song. You must have an ISRC code for your song before you send it anyone or before any collection agencies can pay you. Collect jukebox royalties on your behalf for all the venues in South Africa that own jukeboxes that have your music on them. If you have music videos playing on TV stations like Trace, they will also collect your music video royalties through a diving of RISA called RAV, RISA Audio Visual. What you need to do. Register to become a member online here. RISA will send you your own code. Read the instructions on how to create your own ISRC codes. These codes are vital for royalty payments. These codes are used to track where and when your music is playing, and Samro. Sampra and Capasso all need this code to figure out how much they owe you. If you are distributing your music independently through platforms like Distrokid or TuneCore, they'll give you an option to use your own RISA-generated ISRC code, or to use their own. You can use either or. If you're signed to a label, they should collect the royalties owed for jukeboxes and music videos on your behalf and pay you your share according to your contract. If you are not signed to a label, you need to join RAV. If you have music on jukeboxes or on TV, you need to make sure they are paying you what's owed to you. You'll need all the ISRC codes for the songs on jukeboxes as well as the ISRC. Codes for your music videos on TV. Go visit them in Joburg. They're right by multi-choice. Otherwise, try calling slash emailing them. To Samro. What they do. Samro collects publishing royalties from commercial spaces that play music, and distribute those royalties to their members. Publishing royalties are paid to people who own the intellectual property to a song i.e. people that have written the melody, lyrics, or anything else that constitutes as an original idea to a song. Important Information About Intellectual Property If you wrote a song that someone has made a cover of, and that cover is playing in commercial spaces, then the person who made the cover must register you as the writer. You are entitled to 100% of the publishing royalty for that cover. If you cover a song that someone else wrote, you need to credit them as the writer so Samro can pay them the publishing royalty. Respect others' intellectual property. If you get caught stealing other people's ideas, you will not only look like an idiot, but you can face serious penalties. The choice is yours. What you need to do. Become a member here and follow up if you don't hear back. Once you're a member, make sure Samro give you your login details for your online portal, where you can register your work, live performances and check when and where you're getting paid. Make sure your songs are registered before you send them off to radio stations, and notify your publisher if you have one. If there was more than one writer on the song, make sure that you have written confirmation of the splits for the song before you register it. For example, 
if I've made a song with my friend Matthew Gold, we need to agree on who gets what, we normally just split it 50 fiftieths, and then we both need to register the songs our sides with those splits. I have written many songs with other artists and have failed to confirm the correct splits. What ends up happening is that when I register the song on my portal, I will register the songs with what I think the splits are, and if my splits don't match up to the splits that the other artists have registered, the royalties get frozen and you won't get paid until your splits correlate. Keep track of your payments. If you know that your song is playing on the radio or anywhere else, make sure that your results correlate. You can track your payments by clicking the Historic Distributions tab on your Samro portal. I recently found out that despite having thousands of spins on the radio, I had not received a cent for my song You Say You Love Me in over three years. I queried them about it, the problem got solved, and I got paid for that song yesterday. Remember to register all your live performances on your portal too. You might be paid a fee by the event slash festival owner, but not many musicians know that there's a publishing royalty owed to you too when you play to a crowd. Troubleshooting Registering a song should be a quick and painless process, and sometimes it is. But unfortunately, Samro can sometimes be a pain to deal with. There's often a lot of human error involved when songs are registered. I've had cases where there was incorrect spelling of the name of the song, or they forgot to include one punctuation mark, and it throws the whole system. They are also terrible at responding to emails or phone calls. But it's not doom and gloom. As far as I know they're working on a new system which makes the registering process a lot more streamlined, and I have faith that whatever teething problems there will hopefully be fixed in future. We're counting on you Carabo Senna. In the meantime, my suggestion would be this, visit them at the Samro building in Bramfontein. Save yourself the trouble of emailing and phoning them, sit down with one of the consultants, see them face to face and deal with whatever problems you may be having then and there. It will save you a lot of time. You need to be patient and just take things step by step. There is light at the end of the tunnel. Trust me, I've been through it all. The juice is worth the squeeze. Update, I got hold of Samro's undock list, a massive 20MB spreadsheet of every undocumented song i.e. songs that have accrued royalties but has never been claimed, either due to one. Negligence from the artist or two. Songs being registered incorrectly. Download the undock list here. If you've had your music played on radio, there's a good chance that some of your work is on this list. If it is, get hold of Samro, give them the name of the song with the corresponding work number and get your royalties for your unclaimed works. Do you need a publisher to deal with your publishing royalties? If you're good at doing admin, and happy to negotiate potential syncs for adverts and movies, then no. If you'd prefer to have someone helping you with this kind of stuff, yes. If you're already signed with a publisher, they should be sorting out Samro admin for you, and actively seeking out sync opportunities for your music. If you have a deal like mine, you'll be paying them around one-third of your publishing royalties in return for their service. My experience. I would be more than happy to give them that cut if I didn't have to worry about the teething problems that come with registering music with Samro but unfortunately publishers are often looking after a large catalog of music and they can't always investigate every song under a microscope, or pitch your song for every opportunity, unless it's a massive hit. As I mentioned earlier, I recently just got paid for You Say You Love Me, a song that I haven't received a cent for in over three years. My publisher only came to the party after I did a bit of detective work myself, and it made me question why I'm giving them one-third of my publishing royalties if I'm doing the groundwork myself. In an ideal world they would have come to the party before I even suspected something wasn't right, but it just is what it is. I am in a position now where I must decide if I should either one. Stay with my publisher too. Explore alternative publishers, or three. Self-publish. All are viable options but at the end of the day you need to decide which will work for you. Extra information Sign up with Radio Monitor to get comprehensive data, showing you which stations your music is playing on, and how many plays your songs are getting. 
The person in charge of Radio Monitor South Africa is Jared Aston Asenheim, and you can mail him at jared at radiomonitor.com to sign up. This data is helpful if you think your royalty payments don't match the amount you're getting i.e. If Samro's only paying you R10 for a song but it's got 1000 plays on radio, you'll have evidence to show them that something's not adding up and they will do a recalculation. Example of Radio Monitor Report Update, in February 2020, Samro have recently paid out their members for the last radio distribution, July 2018 June 2019. Since writing this article, I have created another separate article entitled 5 Steps to Making Sure You Get Paid Your Samro Royalties, which goes more into depth about the steps you can take using Radio Monitor alongside your Samro reports to track exactly what you're owed. If you had music active during July 2018 June 2019, now is an especially good time to read this. 3 Sampra What they do Sampra collects needle time from radio stations and retail spaces that play music, and distribute those royalties to their members. Needle time royalties are paid to people who performed on the studio recorded version of a song aka The Master. Performers only receive 50% of the needle time income. That 50% is split according to rules as to whether they are featured, other featured, or non-featured. Performers include featured performers, other featured performers, Matthew Gold would be the other featured performer on a track like The Kiffness 2 Blessed to be Stressed Foot Matthew Gold, and the non-featured performers i.e. The session musicians, drummers, bassists, backing vocalists, triangle players, and anyone in between. If you wrote a song and you performed on it, then you are entitled to both a publishing royalty from Samro as well as a needle time royalty from Sampra. If you covered someone else's song, then you are entitled to the needle time royalty, for performing it, but not the publishing, because it wasn't your idea first. What you need to do you can try your luck with signing up to become a member here, but I can tell you that after many emails and calls to Sampra over a one-year span, I had no luck with online applications or phone calls. I only became a maid when I went to go see them at the Samro building in Bramfontein. Once I was there, the process of making me a member took no longer than five minutes. See more on this here. Once a member, I've actually enjoyed working with Sampra. They seem to be good at payments once they have you on their system and them all the info they need. If your music is signed to a label like Sony or Universal, there's a good chance that your music is already on their system and has accrued royalties, provided your music has been active on private radio stations or any retail space. It's just a matter of making sure they have all your details so they can pay you what's owed. If you're not with a label, you need to register your songs with them. You can try your luck here. There's a good chance your online notifications will be ignored, so best bet is to just go see them in person. When you go to see them, take ID, your catalog, preferably on a CD with the sleeve info which shows that you are a performer on the songs, is rec codes and any other info which you think might be useful to them and they should be able to help you out. Troubleshooting Sampra are sitting with a massive undock list of songs, over 30,000 songs from 2009-2016, that have accrued royalties from the people that license our music from Sampra, but those royalties haven't been claimed for one of two, or both, reasons. One the artists don't know about them. Two there's been broken telephone and the artist name or song title has been reported incorrectly, and then it can't be sent to the artists. Here you can see some of my songs on the undock list, where are you going? Landed up on the undock list because on my album the song doesn't have a question mark at the end, but the reported version it does. Because of that one error, I couldn't get paid. The other songs also ended up in undock because of they, essay, at the end of the featured artist's name. According to Sampra, sometimes radio stations report the songs with essay, to keep track of the local songs they're playing but it messes up the whole payment system. Anyway, it's not the end of the world. If something like this happens to you, which is likely, the money's still there waiting to be claimed. 
it's just a matter of correcting whatever spelling or punctuation mistakes there are in the reports, and it will get sorted. Despite the initial frustration of having my membership application ignored, I've enjoyed working with Sampra and I'm all sorted now after visiting Sampra and have been enjoying the benefits of my performance royalty checks coming through from Sampra every couple months. That being said, the SABG still haven't paid the R102 million they owe to Sampra. Of that pot, I have reason to believe, based on my guesstimates, that around R100k of the SAB debt belongs to me and the remaining R101,9 mil belongs to all the other talented musicians that have recorded almost all of the local music you hear on your favorite SABG stations. This alone, is why I refuse to send my music to SABG stations. Update, I have Sampra's complete undock list for songs active between 2009-2016, download here. Like Samro, the list of songs with unclaimed royalties is huge. Check it out and see if any of your songs are on there. If they are, get hold of Sampra as soon as you can to claim what's yours. Understanding the SAB vs Sampra dispute, since writing this article, I have learned more about Sampra's history with the SAB and their crazy and nonsensical decision to not pay Sampra and instead paying a much smaller, unknown organization called Impart. Read the document Sampra sent me which outlines the history very clearly over here. Understanding more clearly what happened from the beginning of 2016 until now justifies my decision to not send my music to SABG even more. For Capasso. What they do. Capasso collects mechanical royalties from CD sales and streams, and distributes those royalties to their members. Mechanical royalties are paid to the writers and the publishers of a song. If you wrote or CO wrote on a song and that song ends up on an album, compilation CD like now, and gets streamed on Apple and Spotify, then you are owed a mechanical royalty from Capasso. Capasso does not pay performers, only composers and publishers. What you need to do If you have a publishing deal, your publisher should be collecting your Capasso royalties on your behalf and paying you around two-thirds of the mechanical royalties accrued from the collection, depending on your contract. If you don't have a publisher, you need to become a member of Capasso and you can become your own publisher. You can try your luck here. My experience of working with Capasso has been a bit of a lol. Capasso requires a joining fee of R100, which I paid. When I went to go see them in the Samro building at Bramfontein I asked them about the status of my membership. They said I'm not a member, so I told them to check their emails. The lady there found my email and said oh the guy who was meant to make you a member resigned, so that's why you haven't been made a member. I could only laugh because of how ridiculous it was. Anyway, I only later found out that in order to become a member I can't be signed to a publisher, so again I need to decide whether I'm happy to let my publisher take one third of my mechanical royalties, or if I should tackle Capasso myself, recap. Final Thoughts if you want to get what's owed to you as a South African musician, you're going to have to accept that it might not be smooth sailing. However, I can tell you with confidence that if you follow my guidelines and you are patient and persistent, you will eventually get what is rightfully yours. I'm also aware that everything I have said is based purely off information that has presented to me during my journey, and I'm open to constructive criticism. If there are any peers or people in the music industry who pick up incoherencies in anything I have said, please feel free to email me at thekifness at gmail.com, or even just drop me a DM on any one of my social platforms at thekifness and I will happily update the article so that it can be as accurate as possible and be as helpful to musicians as possible. I need more information. If anyone has any information about the needle time and publishing royalty rate per spin on various radio stations, please let me know. It's amazing that we have access to the data via radio monitor, but it seems crazy that we don't have access to the information which tells us how much we should be getting paid for each spin. If we had access to that information, it would mean we could hold our royalty collection agencies accountable for the amounts we're getting paid. To the best of my knowledge, on average we should be getting our 100 slash spin on stations like 5FM or 947, but I simply don't have enough information to verify that. 
Any information regarding this would be greatly appreciated, thekifness at gmail.com. Update, I have figured out an easy way to find out how much you should be getting per spin. In 2013, I got paid R10K for my first radio single Fuatsek and it played exclusively on 5FM. On your Samro report it will tell you how many times it played and on what station under usage. Over here we can see that it played 113 times in total. Row W, the descriptive name for the fiscal operation code, will show you how much money the song generated. We can see that it made R102687070. So from that we can deduce that Fuatsek got RR90 per spin. R10268-113. The last row shows you what you made after your percentage split. Knowing that Fuatsek should be getting R90 per spin, I can then go to my radio monitor reports to double check that it has indeed played 113 times. In my most recent report, Samro said that my one single lose you only played 14 times. When I checked my radio monitor report, I noticed that it played 1,370 times. When I told Samro they claimed that they accidentally paid the wrong David Scott and are in the process of paying me over R30K for that song, opposed to the R400 they originally paid me.